The Music Man Majesty is a fantastic guitar, but Sterling by Music Man offers the MAJ100 and MAJ200, which are physically identical to the Brig Brother, but at a fraction of the cost. So what's missing from these guitars, and does it really matter? Let's find out. What is up everyone, Man Bun Melet here. The MAJ100 and MAJ200 guitars are made by Ernie Ball's budget-friendly brand, Sterling by Music Man. The MAJ100 retails for $1,050 and the MAJ200 for $1,500. No, they're not budget guitars, but compared to the Music Man Majesty, which starts at $3,800, those prices look pretty appealing. I'm not going to get into all the specifics of these guitars, but rather focus on the differences between the Music Man and the Sterling guitars, as well as the differences between the MAJ100 and 200. Some of the similarities are obvious, like the body shape, headstock, neck profile, and contouring on the body and neck joint. Because of these features, the Sterling guitars play pretty much identically to the Music Man. I did do a full review of the Music Man, so make sure to check that out after you finish this video, of course. Before I go any further, big shout out to Zounds for lending me these guitars. If you're interested in picking any of them up, make sure to check out the description for the links. I have the MAJ100 in Crimson Red and the MAJ200 in Cerulean Paradise. The 100 also comes in Siberian Sapphire and Arctic Dream, and the 200 in Royal Red, Majestic Purple, and Blood Orange Burst. The Music Man is in Titan Blue and comes in more color options than I have time to go over. The Sterlings come with a heavily padded gig bag and the Music Man with a hard shell SKB case. One obvious difference between these guitars is the body materials and finishes. But before you get into the materials, another difference that is not so obvious is the construction of these guitars. The Music Man is neck through and the Sterling guitars are set neck, but I can't tell a difference. Looking at the neck joint, the Sterlings look identical to the Music Man. Back to the materials, the Music Man comes with a Honduran mahogany through neck, Okame wings, flay maple shield inlay, high gloss polyester finish, ebony fretboard, and 24 medium jumbo stainless steel frets. The MAJ100 has a mahogany body, it should be noted it is not Honduran mahogany, with a plastic carbon fiber looking shield inlay, satin finish, three piece mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard, and 24 medium jumbo nickel frets. The MAJ200 comes with either a mahogany or Nyato body, depending on the color. This one is Nyato, a quilted maple or spalton maple top, gloss finish, three piece mahogany or Nyato neck, again, depending on the color, ebony fretboard and 24 medium jumbo stainless steel frets. While the body and neck materials are different, the Sterlings certainly don't use crappy materials. The MJ200 using the same fretboard wood and fret material as the Music Man is a nice touch. I prefer stainless steel frets over nickel myself as they won't tarnish, like nickel will, but you can easily clean up nickel frets with some steel wool. The finish on the Music Man is better than the Sterlings. On both Sterlings, you can see some bare wood in the cavities, not a huge deal, but it's there. This is not the case with the Music Man. I do prefer the look of the quilted maple on the MAJ200 myself. I would love to see that top on the Music Man. I did ask a handful of people which guitar they thought was the most and least expensive of the three. Surprisingly, the MAJ200 was chosen as the most expensive, just as much as the Music Man, even by the vocalist and bassist in my band. So if you're worried about looks, especially on stage, worry not. The necks on these guitars are super thin and feel pretty much identical. The Sterlings have a straight 16 inch radius fretboard, whereas the Music Man has a 17 inch radius. I'm not sure why they decided to go with 16 inches instead of 17, like the Big Brother, but I would assume it's because a 16 inch is a common radius and going to 17 inches would require new tooling, therefore increasing the cost. The 16 inch isn't all that different from the 17 inch. Just to show you how small the difference, let's take a look at the cross section of the neck. They're roughly two inches wide at the 12th fret. With the 16 inch radius fretboard, each end will drop 31.2 thousandths from the peak and with a 17 inch radius, then will drop 29.4 thousandths. That's a difference of less than two thousandths. That's thinner than a sheet of paper you'd find in your printer. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. All three of these guitars have shield inlays. The Sterlings have a custom JP shield at the first fret and the Music Man has the Dream Theater Majesty logo. The inlay materials look similar to my eye, but if you run your finger over the Sterlings, you can barely feel the inlay. On the Music Man, they don't feel like they're there at all. The Sterlings both have a plastic nut and the Music Man a melamine nut with notches cut out. I have no idea why they're there. They all have a set of locking tuners in a 4 plus 2 configuration. The Music Man comes with shallower tuners, whereas the Sterlings come with no-name tuners. I feel like I can get a better grip on the shallower locking knobs. The Sterling locking knobs slip a little, so I feel like I need to give them an extra twist. The shallower tuning pegs have a touch more resistance than the Sterlings, making fine adjustments just a little easier. All three guitars have a floating trim. The Sterling trims look a little bare bones, while the Music Man has a nice chevron color. You can adjust the string height on each individual saddle, which is a nice added bonus. The whammy bar on the Sterlings is held in with a set screw and a rubber insert. The Music Man has a notch at the end of the bar, which locks it into place. The nice part about the set screw is you can add just enough tension so the bar will stay in place and not hang down. I'm not sure if the Majesty has any such adjustment. You may have noticed that these guitars do not have locking trims or locking nuts. 
This can create some tuning issues. When diving with the whammy bar, the tuning is just fine. If you saw my review of the Music Man Majesty, this will sound familiar. Issues can occur when you do really big bends. When you come back, the string might sound flat. Tuning a dive on the whammy brings the strings pretty much back to the original pitch. Maybe just a little flat. Each string does have this issue, but it seems to affect the third string the worst on all three guitars. The Music Man has the same issue, but it doesn't go as far out of tune, most likely due to the better nut material. To counteract this, you can try using a dry lubricant like Tune It from Music Nomad. All three guitars have a different set of humbuckers. The Music Man has a set of John Bertucci's latest signature pickups, the DiMarzio Dreamcatcher in the bridge and Rainmaker in the neck. The MHA 200 has a older set of Bertucci signature pickups with a Crunch Lab in the bridge and Liquifier in the neck. The MHA 100 essentially has no-name pickups. I'm very familiar with the Crunch Lab. It's in four of my guitars and one of those also has Liquifier. We can't talk about pickups without talking about the Fishman Power Bridge Piezo Saddles in the bridge of the Music Man. In my opinion, this is the biggest difference between the Music Man and the Sterlings. If you want more information on this system, check out my full review on the Music Man. Each guitar has a three position switch, which is angled in a way that matches the direction of your hand. They also have a volume and tone control. The Music Man has an additional volume and three position switch for the piezos. The volume control on all three guitars is also a push push switch, which will give you a volume boost. The Sterlings have a fixed boost, whereas the Music Man, you can adjust the boost with a pot in the back of the guitar. Unfortunately, the feeling of the volume and tone pots on the Sterlings are different. This can happen when you have a combination of normal and push-push or push-pull pots. They likely came from different manufacturers. This isn't a deal breaker for me, mostly because I never touch my tone pots. All three pots on the Majesty feel identical, plus the Majesty's tone pot is also push-push for splitting coils on both pickups in the middle position of the three-way switch. The pots are fitted with custom JP knobs, the Music Man has rubber grips. I wasn't a huge fan of these on the JP70 when I first got that, but they don't bother me now. On the back of the guitars are battery compartments, 9 volt for the Sterlings and 3 AA for the Majesty. This is required for the active electronics. This makes sense for the Music Man, but other than the volume boost in the Sterlings, I'm not sure what the active electronics are there for. What's a big bummer is if the battery is dead, all three guitars will have zero output. I'm not a fan of that. If I owned either of these Sterling guitars, the first thing I would do is get rid of those active electronics. At the end of the necks are truss rod adjustment wheels. This is common on Music Man and Sterling guitars and makes adjusting the truss rod really easy. They all come with a bar for adjusting the truss rod. You can also fit an Allen wrench in there if need be. The Music Man bar includes a handle. The overall build quality of these guitars are similar. I'd rate the Music Man as 5 out of 5 and the Sterlings as 4 out of 5. The biggest thing that stuck out to me on the Sterlings is a small indent on the back of the neck around the first fret. I didn't notice it until I saw light reflecting off the glossy finish of the MIJ200. Then I checked it on the 100 and I could feel it there. Again, it's a very small indent and not something I'd even remotely notice when playing the guitar. Also on the MIJ100, you can feel the shield seam with your fingernail. As I mentioned early on in the video, the playability of all three guitars is pretty much identical. One small difference is with the neck radius, as I previously mentioned. I did find it interesting they have a constant radius fretboard as I normally play a 10 to 16 inch compound radius, but I actually don't mind the feel of these flatter fretboards. Another small difference is with the MIJ100. Because of the satin finish, I prefer the feel of the neck over the two which have gloss finishes. The gloss finish can be a little sticky, but they're not that bad. I just prefer an unfinished or satin neck myself. The setup from the factory on all these guitars was pretty good. The Music Man was probably the setup the best, but I did need to end up doing a slight truss rod adjustment. The MIJ200 also needed a slight adjustment as well, but the MIJ100 was not needed at all. The intonation on all guitars is spot on and the string heights are damn near perfect. Another quick thing to mention is the weights of these guitars. They are all super light. The Music Man is the heaviest at 7 pounds, the MHA 200 next at 6.6 .6 pounds, and the 100 at 6.3 pounds. I wasn't going to mention it, but while I'm switching between all these guitars, there is an obvious weight difference. I still wouldn't be worried about getting uncomfortable while playing any of these guitars on the stage. Now let's see how these sound. For the demos, I'll be using the Archetype Pertucci Amsim by Neural DSB. Let's start with the MHA 100. <laughs>
pickups on this guitar don't sound bad, especially for in-house pickups. Let's see how the MAJ200 sounds with the Marzio Crunch Lab and Liquifier. <laughs> MJ200 bridge pickup is a little more crunchy and has more fullness to the sound. The neck pickup sounds cleaner and more articulate. The MJ100 pickups don't sound bad, but these are definitely a step up. Now let's see how the Music Man sounds with the Dreamcatcher and Rainmaker. <laughs> To me, the bridge pickup just screams. The neck pickup is very similar to the MAJ200, but has a little more to it. It's hard to explain. Maybe you guys could hear it. Let's see how they sound clean, starting with the MAJ100. Clean, it sounds okay. Maybe a little twangy for my taste. Let's see how the MAJ200 sounds. I think that sounds a little bit better. It has more fullness to it. Let's see how the Music Man sounds. To me that sounds pretty good, but I think I might prefer the MAJ200 over the neck pickup on this guitar for clean. Of course, this guy has a few other options like coil split modes and the middle position. Which actually doesn't sound that much better, but it also has the piezo pickups in the bridge. Now that sounds awesome. Because this guitar has such a strong clean sound with the piezo pickups, you really don't need to rely on the neck pickup for clean and can design it more for your lead tones. I have one guitar with a piezo bridge and I never play clean without it, usually a piezo mag mix. Overall, I prefer the sound of the Music Man the most with the Petrucci's latest signature pickups as well as the piezos. 
The pickups on the MJ200 were his first signature set from DiMarzio, and he's had two other sets in between, the Illumineer and Sonic Ecstasy sets. So it would probably make sense that his latest pickups would sound the best, at least to me. If you've gotten this far into the video, you're probably at least somewhat convinced these Sterling guitars stack up pretty well to the Music Man, but which one should you buy? First, let's see if the MAJ200 is even worth the upgrade with a higher price tag, $450 more than the MAJ100. We can roughly price out the material differences using an online custom guitar building tool. First is the Quilt Maple Top, compared to the Plastic Shield Inlay. This is about a $100 upgrade. Next, the Ebony Fretboard Material over Rosewood, that'd be about $50. Stainless steel frets over nickel, $30. The pickups are easy to calculate. You can buy a Crunch Lab and Liquifier set for $200. The last thing is the finish, which is a dyed gloss over satin. This would probably be about $200. Altogether, we're looking at $580 worth of upgrades for $450. Even if I was a little off on my estimates, that's still a good value. But do you want or need all these upgrades? That's up to you. What's interesting is you can get the same pickups in the Music Man for $200 as well. So if the only thing you don't like about the MAJ100 is the pickups, you can replace them with the Crunch Lab Liquifier set or Dreamcatcher Rainmaker set for $200, making it a $1,250 guitar over a $1,500 MHA 200. In my opinion, that might be the way to go. The different woods and finish don't really add much other than aesthetics to the guitar. The stainless steel frets can affect the playability compared to the nickel frets on the 100, but if you clean them with steel wool every once in a while, they'll feel just like stainless steel. Plus, if you don't want any of those pickups, you can go with whatever you want. If you change the pickups in the MAJ200, it would almost feel like you're throwing away $200, unless you can get some money for selling them. Thanks again to Zounds for letting me try these guitars out, and if you want to pick one up, check out the links in the description. But hey, until next time, rock on!